here we go. We're going to do the, we're going to go back to the long room. And the good news, I don't have any announcements. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Lama Lama Good on Lojo La Jo, Jo Adang Chen Shi Ki, Love Jia Su, Sum Yamba Mepan Cha. Again, uh, in this point, in the ancient book, which is about um, 900 years ago, uh, he's just giving short advices. And uh, this first one is Lama La Muga, means uh, have fun with your teacher, have respect for your teacher, okay? Uh, I like affection. Uh, respect is like this. And then affection is like, hey, guess what? <laughs> you know, okay. And uh, I like that kind of love, okay? I like, uh, we are friends and we are having a good time. We're having a good Dharma study together. So I like this kind of, uh, I like this kind of respect. I don't like this kind of respect, you know? I like, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the donut, yo chow. <laughs> you know, something like that, okay? Mama na muga, so have fun with your teacher. Have fun. If you're not having fun, I think you have a problem. Okay. I think if you're too serious, there's some kind of problem. You know, if you're happy, you're having fun, right? So I think have fun with your teacher. Lojong la joa dang. Have fun with lojong. Okay. Lojong is crazy. Lojong is crazy. You know, lojong means. Uh, you know, there's 100 people and there's only 50 refreshments and you're like, <laughs> everybody else go first, you know? And you, you let the other people have it first. And you're like, ah, I didn't get any, that's okay. That's a lojo, okay? So have fun with lojo. I hate serious lojo. You can rob, there's only one coffee now. You you can take it, you know. Like that's I think so serious. Lojo is not lojo, right? It's like Rob. There's one more coffee. Go get, it. you know. Have it, have it, you know. Enjoy and have fun with your lojo. Okay, that's what he said. Tenshi ki love just someone now means uh, keep your, you know, when you study lojo, when you get bodhisattva vows. Uh, these are the bodies of us. Uh, Dr. Shenma, first one, you know, <coughs> stop uh, criticizing other people and praising yourself. That's the first one, Dr. Shenma. Uh, so keep them happy, okay? Don't keep them very serious, okay? Have a good time with the lojo, have a good time with your bodhisattva vows, okay? Know them, right? You think I learned them in one day, I didn't. It was suffer for six months or something, okay? And work hard, and then have fun, have fun with the bodhisattva vows. Keep them, have fun. All right, uh, next one is a picture of three doors. You, Francisco. Tres puerto, tres puerto, puente, three doors. You guys got a picture for me? Hmm. Anyway, okay, they're gonna look for them. All right. Lula uh, is in Tawama Shakpar, Gewala Ko. You guys know Down Jor, Down Jor. These are the 18 leisures and fortunes in the Lamrim tradition. Here, you have the same word, Delwa, say Delwa. Uh, and it says, don't do Delwa. Do not do Delwa. Delwa means relax uh, with your good karma. And he says, don't do it. You know, uh, if you still have a body, and if you still have a mouth, and if you still have a mind, for God's sake, use it. Do something with it, you know. Don't leave your body for a whole day 
without helping somebody, okay? So your body wants to be lazy, and your mouth wants to be lazy, and your mind wants to watch Korea soap opera on Netflix. But fight, you know, push them. Dawa mashak means push them. You know, they will get tired. What's the best thing to do? What's the best dharma thing to do when you're tired of serving others? Serve them more. Okay. It's very refreshing. Okay. It makes you much energy. Okay. When you feel tired, oh, Geshwan, this is means that Geshwan gave me so much work. What should I do? I said, get more. Get more work. The best way when you feel tired, I'm telling you from grandpa, you know, I'm much, I'm double, triple your age. And I don't feel so tired, right? And just when you feel tired, then work harder. That's the solution for tired. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Dawa Mashaba, Gela Bakul means push your body, push your speech, push your mind to serve more people. Keep pushing. Don't stop. Push harder. People say, I, I'm overworking in ACI. What should I do? Join YSI. Work for them <laughs> also. That's my suggestion. <laughs> and it worked for me. You know, I have a lot of energy and I enjoy my life. And, and uh, I was born before your grandfather. Okay. Luki Gewani Chakor Sokyangba Minki. This is very beautiful advice, okay? Uh, and by the way, these are, again, these are just short advices. And then he's going to give you the big one, which is the six perfections. So we're about to start the six perfections. Tim, I think the next program is Diamond Mountain in, in April, right? Am I right? Yeah, we will continue this book at our retreat center in Arizona. I'll tell you the ultimate story of our retreat center. Uh, some lady from Shanghai came to me at the retreat center, and she's like, Kirsla, can I ask you a question? It wasn't Wang Xiao. It was somebody else, okay? And she said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, I'll try. She said, last night, did you see? I'm like, see what? She said, the whole sky covered with stars. The whole sky. Millions and millions of stars. We chose a place where there's no city nearby. We, a retreat center, according to the ancient knowledge, you should build it in the empty place. We found them. It's one of the most empty places in the world. There's no light pollution. It's completely dark. And the stars are unbelievable. And, and she, this, this Shanghai lady, I'm sorry, Wang Xiao, but it was, she said, here's a question. Fine. Last night, the stars, I never saw in my life. I said, yeah. She said, are they coming back tomorrow? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. They come back every night. She said, wow. You know, and I feel, wow, she never saw all the stars. She thinks it's we invited them for one night. And uh, you, you will love the place. You will love, love the place. It's very beautiful. And uh, to do retreat, to get this teaching during retreat is very, very beautiful. Very, very fun. And it's a beautiful place. Okay. So please come if you can come. Okay. Look uh, again when you and here's a beautiful advice. He says, uh, talking about physical good karma, you know, good karma you can do with your body. He says, of course you can do prostrations. You know, my lama used to do like hundred prostrations, two hundred prostrations. I don't like it; it's too hard. Uh, then he says, korokor. It means uh, you can find a stupa, and you can walk around the stupa. These are physical good karma, right? But he says that's not the only good karma for a, a real Lamrian person. Sit up straight. You know, fix, help the chi in your body. Okay, when you meditate, 
when you sit in a long run, uh, sit up super straight, okay? Back is straight, tummy is uh, tight, shoulders are back, you know, chin is not like, mm. and uh, he said, you don't have to go to a temple and walk around the temple. Uh, you don't have to prostrate to the Buddha. Just sit up straight in your chair and help your prana, help your prana to move. And it will help your meditation. It will help your health. It will help your, your study. Get in the habit of sitting up straight all the time. Okay, not just when Geshe is there. Okay, but especially at home. Okay, even on the important chair. Sit up straight, okay? And it's very good for your prana, and it will help your meditation. Just get in the habit, okay? I have the habit, right? I'm always sit up straight, okay? Even I'm lazy with my exercise. Sit up straight, okay? That's the minimum. And then, of course, using your body to help other people, okay? But even sitting up straight so you can meditate better, uh, that is good karma with your body because you're thinking about your meditation. You know, you're thinking about your meditation. It, you don't even doing it directly for other people. You are just trying to help your own prana. So your mind is more clear. Okay. Get in the habit to, to sit up straight and it will stay like that. After a few years, you will be like those military guys, right, Igor? Okay. Subject. Anyway. Okay, someone soon look at you. No, John Che, you young, da, da, yen, she, Risu Che, Padang. So, do your no, John, serve other people. Other people come first. In no, John, other people come first. Okay, who gets the coffee first? Other people. Who gets the pastry first? Other people, especially if Geshe is the other people. Okay? And always other people, always other people come first. Other people come first. No, don't cheer you. Benny has a very interesting uh, suggestion. When we say other people come first, we don't make a difference between your enemies and your friends. Okay? Who gets the coffee before you? your friends and your enemies equally, okay? People you don't like, they get the coffee first. People you don't like, they get the donut <laughs> first, okay? And in the low zone, we, Risu, Chepa, Risu Chepa means uh, have some kind of bias that you, you, you draw a line between your friends and your enemies. Low zone doesn't know discrimination, drawing line. This is my friend, this is my enemy. Lojong doesn't, there's no drawing the line, okay? Treat everybody before you treat yourself. And the everybody, no distinction, everybody. Your enemies and your friends both. They get to have the coffee first, okay? Research Chepa Dong, Semchen Dong, Semchen. Remember, then he says something very beautiful. Don't discriminate between humans and animals. Don't discriminate between humans and animals, okay? Animals have a right to this world also, okay? They have an equal right to this world. In, in, we, I was thinking about science. If you ask people, what's your religion? You know, some people say Muslim, some Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, you know. Here's the real religion is in your pocket. This is your religion, you know? You bow down every day, <laughs> you know? And uh, this represents science. Science made this thing, you know? And uh, if I say uh, Buddhism says, I don't know, plastic water bottle can give you cancer, you're like, well, I don't know about that. And then if I say Stephen Hawking says plastic water bottle give you cancer, you're like, oh, I'm gonna stop drinking from plastic water bottle. You you respect the science more than Buddhism, I think. We all do. 
you know, if I'm flying home uh, from, I don't know, Osaka airport, and you say, hey, Rob's a good Buddhist, he made an airplane. I'll say, you know what, I'll just take you night in airlines. You know, <laughs> you believe in the scientist more than, the, uh, you know, okay? So that's, you know, you should, but we believe in science. It's more, I can say, are you Christian? Are you, are you Muslim? What's your country's religion? But really, there's one religion in the world, and this is it. And, and we are all, sci we all believe scientists. Oh, the rabbis say, uh, you know, use your, I don't know, use a piece of wood for your cell phone. And then Steve Jobs say, use this one. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to prostrate to? You know, I think it will be Apple Corporation or Huawei or something like that. So we, we tend to uh, believe in, in those first. And, and science principle is that human is more important than animal. Okay, uh, that's a big, big principle. If we have to kill 2,000 rats to study the brain of a human, if we need to solve diabetes, we can take the organs out of pigs. We can kill them. If we need a new apartment building for humans, and there's lots of birds there, or they can move. You know, we are, science says we are number one, and the animals are number two. Uh, even they are talking about the only way to keep a human body going indefinitely is to grow organs in pigs and then kill them and put the organ in the human. And science, that's a principle of science. And they don't teach it to you in the school, but it's a, it's a principle of science that the human is more important than the animal. If you have to kill 100 animals to survive one human, then kill 100 animals. But in the lojo, everybody who has a feelings is equal in the lojo. Animals are equal in the lojo, okay? Uh, in the lojo, we have to respect animals. In, and if you try, you can do it, okay? If you think about it, you can do it. You don't have to eat animals. Maybe those cavemen, they can't grow rice. They don't know how to do it. Maybe they have to eat uh, animals, you know? But, but we have, farms, we know how to plant food, and we can, we can eat, we don't need to eat animals. There's no reason to eat animals. Why make them suffer? They are, oh, guess that they are small. They are stupid. We can eat them. Okay, so eat your babies also. They are small and stupid also. <laughs> What's the logic? It's no logic, okay? So you, you can eat, you can, I have all these friends from Princeton University. Then I told them I'm going to be vegetarian. Even in the monastery, I said, I'm going to be vegetarian. And they're all like, oh, you're going to get sick. Uh, you're going to, if you don't get protein, uh, you will be sick. You know, you will be weak. You know, listen, all the people who told me that are dead. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I survived much longer without me, understand? Uh, so in the lojo, we're supposed to, you don't divide between your enemies and your friends. And you also don't divide between the animals and the humans. Okay. And there's another one here. Samchen dan samchen limba. Between animal life and plant life. You cannot make a big distinction, okay? You are protecting life. You are protecting. You are protecting the environment. You are protecting the environment, okay? This is important. A monk is not allowed to cut a green plant. We are not allowed to cut a tree, for example. Uh, why? For 2,000 years, we're not allowed to cut a tree. Why? There's... It's their house. It's their apartment. <laughs> you, are, you are ruining the apartment of many animals and birds, you know. Uh, we can cut a tree if we have to build a monastery or something like that. 
we can we can cut a tree. We're supposed to plant some more tree. Okay, so it says here, Risu Chepa. Uh, if you guys want to learn, Ri means uh, drawing. Rimo means drawing, like those Songkhapa paintings. Those are Rimo. They are painted, they are drawn. Ri means to draw a line. Ri Suchepa means don't draw a line between humans and animals. Don't draw a line between humans you like and humans you don't like. Don't draw a line between humans and animals. Don't draw a line between humans and animals and plants. Respect the world, respect the environment. Take care of it, okay? It's very interesting. Lojong is that. Lojong respects the whole environment also, okay? Very beautiful. Sanchemir Chori Michepa Jongwa. And it's funny because he says, Jong your Lojong. Jong your Lojong without Risu Chepa. Don't, don't make these distinctions. You're serving all life. And, and you can't say, I will serve some life and I won't serve other life. That's, that's not Lojong, okay? All right, uh, take all those you. You means uh, objects, uh, animals, birds, humans, trees, planet. Kyap. Uh, Kyap means cover them with your love, like a blanket. You know, cover the whole world with the soft blanket of your love. It's tasty, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better than cinnamon roll, almost. <laughs> Maria's like, mm -hmm. yeah. So take the blanket of your love and cover the whole world. With it. And don't make, don't say I will do it for them, but I won't do it for them. You cannot say that. Okay. Lord Joachim. Chikawa Targa. Chikawa is lived uh, 900 years ago, and uh, he wrote down these instructions for the first time. But they were oral instructions for about 200 years before that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Next picture, you guys. What's the next item? I think they lost my item. It's a dynamite stick, you guys. Number 21, picture number 21. Yeah, dynamite. Okay. Uh, now he's going to talk about you, Kepachen. Say you, Kepachen. Special karmic objects. Okay. Certain people in your life are more powerful, like dynamite. And some people are not so powerful. Okay. Certain people, you're not supposed to distinguish between friends and enemies. Take care of your friends. Don't take care of your enemies. But there are people who are super powerful in your life. And you should uh, be careful around them. They're a dynamite. Okay. For karma, they are dynamite karma. Okay. What's, what's an example? Number one, if it's difficult to love somebody, they are special. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. The person who pisses you off the most is powerful karma for you. And you have to be super careful. They are dynamite for you. Okay? If there's three people, one, you love them, one, you never met them, one of them always piss you off, who's the more powerful? The one who pisses you off. <laughs> be careful around the dynamite, okay? Like, be more careful with that person. Treat them nice. Treat them nice. They are more powerful. Karmic object, more powerful. Okay. That's the first example. Second example, he says, Yo, uh, Nyamba, Lama, Pama, Shakro. The people you are around all the time are powerful karmic object for you. Okay. And you take them for granted. Your wife, your husband, your kids. Okay, you, the people you work with, uh, we tend to take them for granted. And we say things that we will never say to other people. And we do things we will never do to other people. And we think they will still love me. Usually they do. Okay, sometimes they kick you out. Okay, so uh, he says people that you are around all the time 
and he gives a list. Yo nyemba, nyemba means close family, brothers, sisters, mother, father, kids. Okay, they are dynamite. Okay, then he says lama, your teacher. Okay, and lama doesn't have to be a monk in a robe. Lama children are very good lamas. They, I, Nick became a good student after he got the real lama. <laughs> Her name is Amelie. <laughs> okay, uh, so lama. Hama, that was my examination, my Shanti Deva examination. Papa, mama. Okay. And then chakra, chakra means your close friends and colleagues at work. People you work with, people who are, people you hang out with. Chakra means people you hang out with. Okay. Shat means literally uh, a monk's room is called a shak. Rok means your friend. Chakra means the people you work with, the people you hang out with, like that. Okay. They are all more powerful karmic objects because you're around them a lot. Okay. That's dynamite. Dynamite can. We're making, they're making a new road in Arizona, and it's cool because there's a mountain there, and uh, we see the progress every, every week or something, and they take dynamite, and they blow up the mountain, and it's kind of sexy, you know, and they are making a new road that everybody needs. It's a good road, and, uh, but also uh, dynamite can be powerful for good things, and dynamite can kill many people, so, you know. Okay. Ting uh, Ting means that deep down inside of you. Ting. Okay. In your ting. It also means the bottom of the ocean. So it means uh, down inside of your heart, in the bottom of your heart. <clears throat> be careful around this dynamite. Okay. Be, be super careful. The problem is we get used to these people. Oh, Anna's around every day. You know, why should I be nice to her? She's just hanging out here all the time, you know. And we get, I get used to my wife. You get used to your kids. And they are actually more powerful karma because you're around them all the time. So be careful with the people you're around all the time. They are more powerful karma for you. They are dynamite for you, okay? Cool, all right? All right. Mm. Uh, say zom. Zom means uh, all the stuff you need has come together. In English, we say, God, it all came together. What? We got the Lindsay to run the program. We got all the regional directors. The books are ready. Roses on board with the uh, with the briefcase. We got Tim talking about it at his other program, and uh, all the zom zom means everything we need came together. Okay, that's called zom. He says, keep your lojong, whether the tunkens zom or not. Tunken means stuff you need to do a job, the money to do this program. Okay, the time to do this program, the place to do this program, the airplane ticket to do this program. Okay, those are called tunkin. Uh, in YSI, and we're going to have a class in January, in YSI, there's a beautiful description of the tunkin, the things you need to bring together zone to do retreat for deep yoga retreat. To do deep yoga practice, you have to zoom. You have to bring together all the tunkens. Uh, tunken means food, good food, healthy food, uh, quiet place, no bugs, no bugs and no bugs. Okay, I'm the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, the book we are studying in January for the Yoga Studies Institute. The first thing the guy says, uh, 500 years ago, Swatmarama, he says, find a retreat place with no bugs. And when I saw no bugs, I said, this guy knows what he's talking about. Because <laughs> when you're trying to do a deep retreat, the bugs drive crazy. Okay? Uh, so he's, I said, 
then I'm going to read the rest of the book because he knows what he's talking about. Okay, that's called Tung Kian Zong. Okay, Zong. He says Lo Zhong is independent of Tung Kian Zong. Okay, you have time or not? F it. Keep your lojo. You hungry or not? F it. Keep your lojo. You sleep, you didn't sleep last night. Keep your lojo. Okay. It should be independent of things going on around you. Okay. You you're hungry or you're not hungry. You're rested or you're not rested. Your friends are there or your enemies are there. You should be independent. Okay. Keep your lojo. Keep your compassion. Keep your care for other people. It shouldn't be dependent on how you feel. Okay, Ignore how you feel. I don't care if you're hungry. I don't care if you're tired. I don't care if you just served the long room retreat for 25 hours. I don't care. Keep your lojo. It should not affect your lojo. Okay? That's very difficult. You know, If I don't get a nice dinner, I get grumpy. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not supposed to. Okay, Gong <laughs> Bale, and then he gives a uh, he gives a nice poetry. Okay, here's some poetry. Toda ni me trete chebe so kengen poto pa se tamewa. This is poetry, uh, Buddhist poetry. Okay, Toda means uh, your belly is full. You got lots of ponchiks in your belly or yochao. Why does Geshla know the word in every language for donut? Todang, hmm. uh, your belly is full. Nima means the weather is perfect. The sun is out. It's not too hot, not too cold. Okay. It's like yesterday in Kyoto. You know, beautiful weather. You know, uh, trees are beautiful. Everyone's relaxed, you know. Belly full. Good weather. Belly full, perfect weather. Chepe suk means in those conditions, you can pretend to be a Dharma protection. <laughs> okay. Suk means, suk yin means uh, reflection. This che is without the apostrophe. So chepa here means Dharma practitioner. You know, as long as your belly is full, and as long as the weather is really good, you're a nice person. You know what the next verse is going to say, right? Okay. Uh, talk to Bob, say, but when problems hit you, talk to, talk to Bob means suddenly. Suddenly you get a problem. Like you're, you're getting on the airplane, it's business class, everything's good. They're already cooking the dinner. You're like, mm. and then they say 12 hour delay. It's like, the, excuse me, my wife doesn't say I shouldn't curse during lemon, but the shit hit the fan. And you're like, you know, they say 12 hour delay, forget the business class. Here you can have $2, you know, food ticket. You're like, thanks, you know. So when, when poo poo hits the fan suddenly, we lose our lojo. We tend to lose our lojo. You know, everything's as long as things are going smooth. I'm a great lojo practitioner. <sighs> then somebody say twelve hour delay on the flight. What? You know, no more lojo. You throw out your lojo in two minutes, right? Okay. So he says tamawa. Tamawa means I'll give a thousand dollars for tamawa. Thousand dollars. Tamawa. Wait, raise your hand. I'm not giving the money easy. Tamawa. Tamawa. Come on. If it's a thousand dollars, I will take a guess at least. Tamawa. You sure? Nice. Thousand dollars. Where's the money, honey? Or are you going to pay him later? Did you hire a driver to hit him with the car? <laughs> okay. No, it's okay. He will pay him, don't worry. He, he knows more. In English, there's an idiom for you. 
uh, we're good for it. We're good for it means we will pay. Okay, we're good for it. Okay. Yeah, uh, Tamil means normal person. Okay, normal person. All right. Uh, here it's opposed to chupesu. In the line, in the line before, it says when the weather's good and your belly's full, you look like a dharma practitioner. You know. Then uh, somebody canceled a flight, or you know the restaurant closed today for remodeling, and then suddenly you're in Tamil. Then you're just a normal selfish person. You're just a normal selfish person. Okay. Why I pay so much money for a normal selfish person? Why I pay? Why I pay him a thousand dollars for such a small word? In the in the diamond way, okay. In normal Buddhism. Like the one of the worst thing you can do is to kill another person. Okay, one of the worst thing you can do in normal Buddhism is to kill another person. Okay, in higher Buddhism, Diamond Way, Vajrayana, more serious than killing another person is to believe there are not at least three Buddhas in this room right now. That's worse than killing a person in high, high, high Buddhism. Okay, in high, high Buddhism, you're supposed to believe at least two or three Buddhas sprinkle in this audience. Then it's fun to guess who it is. Everybody's like, not me. You know? <laughs> By the way, it's not me. Okay, I mean, I'm working on it, but I'm not there. Okay, but in the high, high Buddhism, uh, we're supposed to practice, as we practice, someone, maybe one, maybe two. How many people here? 200 people, something. Yeah, maybe 200 people here are Buddha. I am not. I'm really, I'm not. Uh, but I, I sometimes think you let me to teach the Lamrim because I'm the only one who's not. <laughs> Okay, and uh, thank you for that. Um, but uh, you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't agree. <laughs> okay, so in, in the high, 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 high teaching, the word, for, the word for there's no Buddhas here today is Tamil. It's the same word. That's the word. It's a very bad word in the high, high teachings. It means there's no Buddha at all in this room. Everybody's normal. Everybody is who they look like. And inside, they are not Buddha. Okay? That's called Tamil. And to believe that about any audience is worse than killing a person in Buddhism. Very interesting. Really interesting. Okay, you got to think about it. Everybody asking Grandpa to teach Diamond Way. Maybe I'm teaching it all the time. You just didn't know. Okay. All right, today I taught you the real word. <laughs> okay. All right, think about it. Okay, and if you really want to have fun, he said, have fun with your lojo, right? Anytime you go anywhere, like we're going to go to a nice, restaurant tonight. We're going to take a break, finally. Grandpa gets a break. Just going to eat. And uh, it's very fun, Buddhism, to look in the restaurant. Who's Buddha? You can play a game with your friends. Go with your Lamrim friends to the Tokyo tea shop or restaurant, sushi restaurant, and, and say, there's one person in this room is a Buddha. And then talk about it. I think it's that guy over there. Nah. He's too obvious normal. You know, should be, I don't know, should be, you know, and then have fun with it, okay? If you, if you want to study Buddhism, uh, do it in the restaurant, do it in the coffee shop, and have fun and say, 
by the way, I'll, I'll tell you some fun, real fun. Uh, when you are alone, go to a coffee shop. And in your heart, silently say, who's the Buddha in the room? And then watch. Like, she's doing it right now. I saw, I saw you. Okay, watch the people. Somebody will go like this, you know. You know, and, and have fun with it, okay? Are they Buddha or not? We don't know. Who knows? They could be a terrible person. They could be Buddha. But, but checking is a great, great meditation. Everybody's like, I want a deep meditation, Jesla. Okay, go to the coffee shop. Ask a question, who's the Buddha? Now look, she's doing this thing again. Ah, they caught you. Okay, so like that, have fun, have fun with it, okay? Have fun with it. I taught one student, uh, what's her name, Mercedes. I taught her to do that. And she went to the mall, and uh, I told her, you look for Buddha, you know? And uh, she went to the mall, and she went to the, like Takeshimaya or something, expensive clothing store to look for the Buddha. And one uh, sales lady in the expensive clothing, she's like, then Mercedes like, ha, ah, ah, ha, and she prostrates three times. <laughs> she prostrates three times on the floor. Then the lady called a security guard. <laughs> Some crazy lady. <laughs> Maybe the security guard also Buddha. I don't know, but it was beautiful. It was really fun. Okay. Don't be scared. A Buddha shouldn't be scared to make a fool out of yourself. Okay? A compassionate fool is better than a non-compassionate smart guy. Understand? Okay. Better. Better keep calm and then she will change the system. Don't be so calm. Long she will do you do the chair or chair or cookie. Then he says, look, uh, why we practice uh, this mojong, which is keka. Keka means it's a difficult practice. It's a difficult practice. To treat your enemies and your friends the same is not easy. Uh, Den chewa means difficult to do and very powerful. Okay, Difficult to do and very powerful. Do it for yourself and others, but not just for this life, okay? So there's a very interesting definition of Buddhism. You know, we were playing with Tim's book. That's not some stupid uh, arguments. It's a question. What is Buddhism and what is not Buddhism? Okay, that's a big, big, that's a, if you don't decide that, how can you study? You know, I'm studying Buddhism. What's Buddhism? I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, here it says, uh, and it's a tradition in Lojong. Uh, if you are, if your Lojong practice, if your Lamrim practice is limited to this life, it's not Buddhism. That's weird. That's powerful. That's powerful. I'll say it again. If your spiritual practice is limited to this life, before up to the time you die, it's not Buddhism. And I mean, all of us are trying to meditate. We're all trying to practice. We're trying to be good people. We're trying to do the right thing. But if your picture of Buddhism ends with death, it's not enough. It's not Buddhism. Interesting, right? Okay. Your, your goal, your vision has to be farther than death, okay? Beyond death. And, and a, a, a real Buddhist has to be thinking in long, longer terms than death. Death is a small change. And it has happened millions of times for you. 
in, you have to be, your practice has to be aimed at bigger things, okay? Not just what this life, okay? This life, these friends, this world, you know, it's nothing. You won't remember anything from this world. It's a small, 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 small stop on a big train ride. <laughs> you won't remember it. And later, you won't remember anything about this world. All the things that are important to you, you won't remember any of them. Okay? So your practice should be bigger, bigger thing. Okay? Bigger than you and bigger than this life. Okay? Cool. Here's a little thing I made from the part. He has a poem now. Uh, next life rather than this one, dharma rather than the world, and feeling towards others rather than the book. I think that one was for Geshe La. You know, uh, and my wife will say things like that. She'll say, uh, you care more about the book. You care more about the Buddhist book than your Buddhist students. <laughs> then I'm like, hmm. Maybe you're right. <laughs> okay. So not judging uh, your book knowledge about Buddhism, judging how you feel towards other people. And these are three famous Mojong uh, advices. You know, focus on the next life and don't focus so much on this life. Okay. This life gonna be boom over like I I had hair yesterday and I was surfing and I remember the feeling of the board when I stand up in Hawaii. I remember that feeling. That's 50 years ago. You know, time goes, Doom, and you're like, oh my God. You know, hmm. <laughs> okay. You, you won't even remember all this thing. Okay. All the things that are important to you now, you, you won't even remember them. When you're my age, you won't remember them. Okay. All right. Next life rather than this one. Dharma rather than this world and feeling towards others rather than study, 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 okay? Uh, and that's a difficult one for me. I like study, study, study. Uh, we, we have some uh, refugees from Ukraine. We, me and my wife invited two, two, two refugees from Ukraine, and uh, we are taking care of them. And, uh, and she's like, we didn't ask them for dinner at our house for a few weeks. And I'm like, honey, I have 200,000 students. I cannot make dinner for each one. It's not possible. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I will have a breakdown. You know, she says, we are having dinner for the, <laughs> okay, honey. And we cooked the whole day for them. And, and uh, you know, she's like, the theory is good, but sometimes you have to do the real thing and invite the Ukrainian guys to dinner. And we had a wonderful time. We had two Russians, two Ukrainians. We made the Christmas tree together. It took like two hours. And then we had a really nice dinner together. And I decided afterwards that was Dharma. That was a good Dharma practice. Okay. All right. Mm. There's the instructions. There's that one. Uh, we have a few more minutes. We have 10 more minutes. And then I'll do question and answer. So maybe you start thinking about question and answer. Uh, it can be about Lojo. It can be about your personal life. And it can be about quality emptiness to you. OK. Kolo uh, Mija, say Kolo. Kolog means uh, total opposite. In English, we say total opposite. In American English, we say total opposite. Uh, what's he doing? What's that guy doing? I said, I don't know what he's doing, but it's the total opposite of Dharma. Okay. What's he doing? Kolog. Uh, it's, the, it's the total opposite of Lojo. Taking care of yourself and ignoring other people is Kolog for Lojo. It's to completely opposite. Okay, so kolok, you can go like this. Kolok, kolok. No, you have to do the mudra. Kolok. Yeah. What's the impolite colloquial in English? Ask backwards. 
okay? The person's ass is in the front and the other part is in the back. Strange, right? So <laughs> it, means, it means your practice is mixed up. You take care of yourself before other people. That's called kolok. There's three koloks, okay? Sorry, six. Six koloks. Let's do some of them. Let's see how many we can finish, okay? There's six different koloks. By the way, when you're doing a real meditation retreat in April with us at Diamond Mountain, just because you're from Japan, there's an airplane that come to Arizona. And you are very welcome to come, and we have a good time, okay? And it will change your life. My business success came from Diamond Mountain. Okay, I, I made the largest diamond jewelry company in the world from nothing, um, zero. And uh, I say it came from retreat. It came from, it came from retreat, okay? So don't say, oh, I'm very busy at my work. I can't go for one week to Diamond Mountain. Okay, work the rest of your life for a small salary. Good luck. Don't, don't make a breakthrough. You know, just keep working, you know, like five dollars and whatever. Okay, if you really want a breakthrough, come and do a retreat in April. Okay, if, if you want to have a breakthrough, if you want to make the most cool thing in the world, you, you need a retreat. Okay, all right. That new university, which we are having MBA program day after tomorrow. Uh, she had that vision in a retreat. She went to Diamond Mountain and did a retreat. She and her partner, Stanley. And she got, the Buddha was yelling in her ear, make a university. And she, it's unusual because she listened and she made a university. One person made like a $50 million university. You know, you can do cool stuff, yeah. In retreat, you can do cool stuff. Okay. So, Kolok Micha, let's look at the six backwards or opposite. Don't do the opposite. Okay. Kolok Micha. Number one, Chiki Chawala Ningru Kache Mi Super Jiten Chawala Kache Super Super Kolok. Say Super Kolok. I put them in. Yeah, I will put them like that. Super Kolok. What Super mean? Sipa means patience. It's the fourth, fourth? No, third. The third of the six perfections. It means the art of not getting upset. Okay, third. Effort, four. You pay me, no. Uh, okay, so Sipa means uh, don't get upset. When you're supposed to get upset, don't get upset. Okay, that's that's the third bodhisattva's practice. Okay. Very, very famous. When you're supposed to get upset, you don't get upset. That's called in in Sanskrit, it's kshama. 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 Ksha came into English as Q U. So Shama became quiet in English. And it means stay chill, stay cool. Cool comes from kshama. Uh, stay cool. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. When something bad happens, uh, don't get angry. But the same word kshama means high tolerance for pain and a high tolerance for exhaustion. So sometimes kshama means special ability to work hard even when you're exhausted or even when it hurts, it's called also kshama. Same, supa, supa, okay? It means a uh, difficult situation, tired, exhausted, it hurts, lots of trouble, financial, everything, trouble, 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 trouble. Kshama means I don't care. I'm going to keep my practice. I don't, I don't care if I feel tired. I don't care if things are going well. Uh, I don't care. doesn't matter. That's also called patience. It's a kind of patience. Okay. I, I don't give up. I don't freak out. I, I don't worry. I don't get discouraged. 
Shama. Shama. Shama literally means in my heart I am quiet. Okay? That's going to cost a lot more money than you think. That's cool. That's going to take 2,000 more hours. That's cool. Hey, guess what? The place you reserved in Kyoto for the program is canceled. That's cool. Okay, that's kshama, okay? Uh, so sometimes kshama means the capacity to work hard when you're already tired, okay? And that's what it means here. Why does he mention that? Chuki jalala, we don't do it. Jigtengi jalala, we do it. How many times somebody said to you, you know, uh, I had this happen. Um, uh, you should meditate every day. You should get up at six o'clock and meditate every day. And you're like, could I just do seven o'clock? You know, I mean, I could do six o'clock. I, I have an alarm. It works. I can do six o'clock, but I'm not top shape at six o'clock. You know, I, I, I feel tired. I, I don't perform very well, but the meditation is very dull at six o'clock. Could I do seven o'clock instead? And if the Lama is smart, they'll say, yeah, seven's a very good time. Any way to get you to meditate, they will agree. Okay? <laughs> you say, I can meditate, but only on the toilet. A good Lama said, great. That's the best place. You know? <laughs> okay? Uh, now, if you've been looking for a job for six months, and you're trying to get a job that pays pretty good money, and somebody says, I can give you a job. And you're like, good. And they say, is 200000 a year okay? You're like, mm, it's okay. And then they say, uh, can you come at 6 a.m.? And you're like, yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> That's kolo. Okay? That's kshama kolo. Okay? When it's some worldly work, and, the, and they say, the boss say, be here at 6 a.m. And you're like, how much was the salary? They're like, 300. You're like, yes, I'm there. And you don't, you don't even hesitate. You're like, yeah, I'm there. I'll be there at 5.30 if you want. You know, that's fine with me. I love to get up early. You know, then the Lama says, please meditate at 6 or 7. And you're like, I don't know, you know, I feel really tired in the morning. That's uh, backwards patience. Yeah, okay, got it. Super kolok, say super kolok. Now, there's a deep principle of teaching Buddhism. When the audience is having fun and when they are interested and they're waiting for the next five goloks, stop the class. <laughs> It's like a Korea soap opera. I, you got to see this opera, okay? What's it called? King, Kissing the King? Or? King's Affection. Yeah. I don't know how many times the show end with... <laughs> then cut, and you're like, wait, they're almost ready to kiss, finally. <laughs> you know? Then they come back next week. You're like, what? You know, so to cut the Lama in class just at the right time is very, very bad luck to hear one kolo and you didn't hear the other five. Understand? It's a special bad karma. Your car going to break every day for the rest of your life. Okay, something like that. Understand? So don't forget to come back online or in person at Diamond Mountain. Anything's okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. Uh, Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. Q&A. Oh, you want to do announcements or Q&A? Or how do you want to do it? Let's do, let's do some Q&A. How long? Okay. You uh, tell me when to shut up. We'll do three questions. Two Guess questions. a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, uh, you decide who's. First one is going to be from Pei Ling online. Yeah. God, I need glasses. How can I best protect and support the minds of people around me? 
meaning sometimes my spiritual brothers and sisters seem to drop into lower schools of thought <laughs> or tell me about their poor worldly habits. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way to gently nudge them towards the Dharma without annoying them, and but still maintaining warmth and lightheartedness? I didn't catch the essence. Just before knowing them, is there any way to... Well, how, how would they can nudge them towards the Dharma in a kind way without annoying them? Annoying. Annoying, annoying yes. Not annoying. But, <laughs> but what did you say just before that? Oh, that... To the, correct them? The, right, that the, she sees them falling into lower, lower schools of thought or they have bad habits in their life. And how does she help them without annoying them? Yes. Okay, good. All right, good. Hmm. Uh, according to the laws of karma, right? And, and we have this, uh, we have a DCI course about controlling your anger. What is it? What level? Nine? She says six, nine, and 10. <laughs> 10, I think, yeah, how to stop your anger, you know, and supposed to be, uh, <laughs> impossible, I'm supposed to be, uh, you find, four step, you have to find another person who has a problem with anger, and then you're supposed to help them, you know, and the best way to mess it up is to go to your friend and say, you know what, <laughs> Stanley, you're the most angry person I know. You know? <laughs> Let me help you control your anger. And then the karma of helping Stanley control his anger helps me control my anger. So there's a very famous mistake with anger management to do the four steps by announcing to the other person, you are the most pissed off person I ever know, you know, you're always getting angry, you know, uh, and they teach us in, in the monastery, when you study Lojong, when you study four steps, it's much wiser to pick the most angry person you know, and by the way, the most angry person you know has no idea they are the most angry person. That's Accept it. It's always like that. You know? <laughs> okay. So go to the person who's most angry that you know, and, and you do it this way. Okay. Hey, Joy, you know, I got a problem. And they're like, what's your problem? And I say, I got this problem. I get angry all the time. You know, I don't know. I just have this thing inside of me. I, I get angry very easily. You know? And I was talking to my spiritual teacher about it. And, they said, try to find someone who can support you and help you to. So I was, I was wondering, could we meet in the coffee shop once a week and we can, I can talk about my anger problem and could you help me? You know, like that. And, and that's a better way. So I would say, uh, you want to hear another, another approach? I gave a long teaching at Diamond Mountain uh, about uh, if you're an irritating person, that karma means that all the people around you will become irritating, you know? And uh, so I taught it for like two days or something. And people come and go, they are traveling from other countries and somebody came, new person came, and, uh, and, and they... They're a very irritating person. And uh, everybody, within 24 hours, everyone doesn't like this person. And we're all like so tired of this person, you know. And then, then she yelled out. Uh, in English, we, we have an expression, I'm surrounded by idiots, you know. And all these Lamrim experts are like, <laughs> because if you're a very irritating person, the sign is that all the people around you will become irritating. So if you are surrounded by irritating people, probably 
you have to work on yourself. Uh, and if you work on yourself, the people around you will change. And, and I can say, honestly, you know, I have normal problems. Like everybody, I have problems. I have irritating people in my life. And, and I try really hard to remember that it's coming from me. Okay, so I'm just saying uh, it works. Okay, it really works. And you have all these, uh, how do you call that? It's not epiphany, but uh, me meta metamorphosis. The person will change completely in one week or something. Someone's really irritating me and, so and someone's really acting dumb. And, and I will go home and I'll be upset and tired and I'm like, God, this person's really, I'm getting so tired of this person. And then I will remember this thing called Buddhism. And uh, I'll say, wait, Geshe-la, they're coming from you, you know. Maybe if you try to stop that bad habit yourself, maybe they will change. So I even did it this week. Here, I did it. Someone was really irritating. And, and I went back to my hotel room, and I'm like, Rrr. and then my Buddhism kicked in. Unfortunately, if you come to Lam Rim a lot, you develop a little guy in your head. He says, don't forget, it's coming from you. Don't forget, it's coming from you. You know, and I'm like, ah, shut up. You know? <laughs> and uh, so I tried not to act like that person. And they changed com completely, 100%, in two days or something. So, it, so if I have this problem that this person has, if I see my fellow Dharma students are not being very nice, maybe, there's a joke in English also, maybe you could change your seat. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because the, the Buddhist way to change an irritating person is to fix yourself. And there's no tension. There's no difficulty. There's no bad feeling. It's all silent. It's all inside your own mind. You know, you say, I'm, I'm seeing all these irritating people. I must be irritating. I must be doing something. Then be a detective. Be a detective. You know, what am I doing to irritate people? You can ask your friends. They will tell you everything you do is irritating. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. So fix it from the inside. And they will change, and and they will change completely. They will become your best friend or something, and it's it's very cool. Okay, look inside, change inside, then the outside will change. Okay. <laughs>